Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. My name is Deborah Lan, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back and tuning in. I'm going to be doing this landscape that I took a picture of here in Nebraska. Yes, I'm currently residing in Nebraska temporarily. Um, I'm still thinking about going back to Florida, but right now I am in Nebraska enjoying the countryside and um, so I want to capture all these landscapes um, that are around me and I've been on a little bit of a landscape kick and I hope you guys are all enjoying it. Um, I've got um, some water in a spray bottle here and I'm misting the top sky portion right now of this painting and I'm going to put some of the cerulean blue and I think it's ultramarine mix that I have here uh, and I'm just kind of putting that down in the sky loosely just getting it down and uh, taking it from there now I'm also going to be doing a lot of palette knife work in this painting and right now I am pulling together some greens that I have off on the side of my tray they had already been sitting there from the last painting and I'm just kind of using them up I think it's like um there's a good mix of olive green sap green greenish yellow uh, those are the kind of the colors and I think there's actually some Van Dyke green in this um, uh, that you're seeing it's just a mixture of all of them right now and at the very bottom I believe that was a little bit of it could have possibly been some Van Dyke green and right now I'm going in and I had put a little bit of I believe it was burnt umber on the tip of my palette knife and I'm just going in and I'm drawing with that pigment that's not the tip of my um, palette knife now this pigment was kind of these paints are um magello by mission they're mission gold and they're really juicy they ne they're really they've got a lot of honey i think in them and they don't dry real cakey or anything they always stay really gooey and so i was able to just stick my little palette knife in there and kind of get a little bit of that gooey paint on the tip and then draw with it and right now i the part of that picture of that inspiration has a very sunny spot right in the middle of it and i'm going in with my palette knife and then just dropping in some of that greenish yellow from mission gold along with just a touch of yellow ochre in there also and then i'm just doing some palette knife work running along kind of putting in some terrain there and some green keeping everything extremely loose now this painting is going to get really ugly before it gets pretty and there's uh there's going to be moments where you're going to say where is she going with this well it, this painting is not a quick it's it's a layer upon layer upon layer and textures are coming into play and stuff like that as you can see right now I am laying down some textures I'm going in with my palette knife and I am scoring that paper it's the blade is running through the wet pigment it's separating the pigment and creating these white kind of lines it's a fabulous technique for maybe some trees or for grasses and stuff like that and just for interesting texture in your paintings. Now you gotta keep in mind that it will kind of cut the paper a little bit. Um, this will definitely not work on an inexpensive watercolor paper. You have to, to do this technique, you definitely will need to be using 100% cotton. So I'm just, I'm just going in and I'm just grabbing that pigment that I have over, unfortunately you can't see it, it's out of the shot. There's just a bunch of green there on the tray, random kind of green colors, and I'm just, I'm just going to be applying that um, there, right there, and just spreading it out and layering pigment. And my work that I'm doing with that palette knife, also, I'm keeping in mind, I'm working on that foreground 
uh, where all the grasses are and the flowers are. So I'm kind of keeping everything making very vertical up and down lines versus right to left horizontal. So foreground, up and down, and everything behind it, you know, that is more horizontal other than the trees. So again, still scoring, just adding texture. The whole idea is to make sure I keep things extremely loose, but also I'm trying to create texture in this painting. And now I have one of my liners and I'm just going in, it's a script liner and it's I'm just putting in some long grasses and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw in some tree um, branches and nothing has to be perfect so when you're putting this first layer down it doesn't have to look good it actually it's it it it, it looks reasonably good right now it's gonna get real ugly here in the next stage like right now right as I start doing this sponging that I have like a little sea sponge and I'm just sponging in texture and color and I'm getting that down and it is it's going to be it's going to get real ugly but it's going to I'm going to loosen it all up and you'll see as this painting progresses that those textures all get loosened up and it starts making more and more sense. This this what I'm doing right now with that little um sea sponge reminds me of the 1990 1990s I think maybe it was was it the early 2000s or was it the 1990s maybe it was the 2000s early 2000s when they were oh everything was faux finished and everything had that sea sponge faux finish oh my gosh it was horrible um <laughs> so it kind of reminds me of that but I'll loosen that all up. So another te technique that I'm using right now is I am using that sea sponge and I am going into my pigments and um, I get that sea sponge wet and it also has got some pigment on it and I'm just kind of dragging it in um, a vertical motion up and down making textures of grass. And it's also good for foliage, for leaves. And you can find these little sponges at Hobby Lobby or you could probably, Amazon probably has them. And uh, they come in all kinds of different random sizes. I just have some small ones that I found in the art department for where you paint because they won't give you great big huge sponge. You don't need a great big huge sponge <laughs> like you get from the sponge dock or something. Yeah, or that you're going to, you know, you just need a small uh, sponge to work with and one that has a little bit interesting texture some of them are very compact those are not so good um, but if you're trying to use it for foliage and stuff like that get one that is a little bit more open and airy okay now you're freaking out I know you are I'm putting some dark pigment down I made a small little um, uh, wash of um, some I think I think there was some indigo in this and ooh I can't remember I I uh, I can't remember what the other color was but it's kind of a purpley kind of gray color um I'm just looking to make a cool background kind of um shadow and I'm just kind of dropping that on the ground and putting it a little bit in the tree um it doesn't need to look perfect because it's just a layer. And again, I'm going in with that sponge and I'm just having a little bit of fun. Can't seem to put that thing down. And I got the mister out. It's, it's got a small mist to it. 
and I'm just kind of loosening all that up. It's making the paper wet, so therefore the color is blending and mixing. And eventually I'll be adding a lot more texture or a lot more paint onto that tree. So now I'm just doing uh, the grass right now and again with that sea sponge loaded with some green I'm just kind of dragging it across the page and again working in the tree. I think I'm taking a little break here and kind of wiping my fingers because when you're holding that sea sponge all full of that pigment, your hands get pretty dirty. And I don't want to destroy my painting either by touching it with my hands loaded with all that paint. So I always keep a, a thing of baby wipes right next to me so I can wipe my fingers clean. Now, I do have a... Uh, this picture has a, oh, what do you want to call it? Evergreen kind of tree. And uh, I have my, um, oh, I'm losing my train of thought. I have my fan brush here, and it, it's an acrylic one. It is not a watercolor fan brush. It's one for acrylic. It is really stiff. You'll see that those, br those bristles don't move very much when I'm working with it. Um, it's perfect for giving me the texture that I want. It's not grabbing a tremendous amount of water. Um, it's just, it's helping uh, give the effect that I want. This will also be loosened up a little bit as I progress. Um, again, building texture. And now just going and putting some depth on the ground. But keeping that middle portion kind of open, I want it to still have a sunny yellow kind of spot there. It can have a little green on it, but for the most part, I want it to be a little bit brighter and lighter right in the middle. Uh, this painting is an inspiration from the photograph that I took. It's not exact. It's it's just kind of given me a, kind of a, a reference of, of something to work from. A lot of times I work from my imagination, but I'm telling you, the landscapes right now here in the summer, oh, they're just so beautiful. I'm just, I'm just like, uh, the when you drive down the country roads, it's just rows and rows of sunflowers and daisies and other kinds of wildflowers. It's just, it's just so beautiful. So now I'm just kind of randomly going in making a mess of color in that tree, as you can see. Um, but um, it eventually I blend it, kind of blend it, uh, the edges, soften those edges, and all of this will kind of start mingling together and coming together as we continue on. And now I'm going in and I've got some yellow ochre and I got my just my quill real wet, went into the yellow ochre and kind of just dropped that pigment in. And it, as you can see, it dropped a lot of pigment and I kind of let it just kind of mellow out and mingle and anything that might be sitting in a big puddle 
I kind of mop that up a little bit because I don't want big puddles. I always try to control the puddles that are on the paper. And now I'm working on the sky right there. What happened was I was working on that tree and I wasn't being careful and I left a hard edge. What happened was that sky got wet and then it starts drying. So you have a wet side and you have a dry side and those two where they met, where the wet and the dry met left a hard line and it kind of starts separating the color and it looks odd. So I had to go back in, re-wet all that. Unfortunately, throughout this entire painting, that mistake is gonna chase me through the whole painting and I have to keep working with the sky. The sky ends up turning out really pretty. It's just, I just have to keep working on it throughout the painting because Hey, when a mistake happens, you just have to keep working around it. Sorry about my head. It keeps poking into the um, into um, the camera shot there. I've got my lovely clip holding my bangs back. Um, not very attractive, but it serves a purpose. So most of this painting, I I'm, I'm, end up doing a lot of this painting with that palette knife. And you're wondering, why, why use a palette knife? Why not just use a brush? I don't know. I find it actually almost, uh, I don't know what it is. It just, it, it really keeps the painting really loose. It gives it a completely different kind of effect um, that I find enjoyable I like it it the paint kind of mingles around a little bit more interestingly um, than with the paintbrush so I'm enjoying doing it and uh, it's a lot of fun and now I'm just putting in some texture there at the bottom working on those foreground and now I'm putting in some depth in the back just running a line along the top and I'm going to go in with a brush and I'm just going to loosen that all up um, so it's not so harsh but it does give me some depth and dimension And putting the grass in. It's so much fun to just get your script liner out or whatever you might be using. And just doing grass is so much fun. I don't know what it is, but it's so fun to make those lines. And now I'm just, I'm see, the, the, the sky is, it's messing with me. This whole painting, I keep fiddling with it but it ends up okay. If you're, um, if you like my tutorials and you like following me, um, please subscribe. 
I would greatly appreciate it. It helps me in the YouTube community and growing. Um, I'd love to be able to get my numbers up there and start progressing a little bit more. Um, I did get approached from Jerry's Artorama and being a brand ambassador, so I'll probably be um, inviting some new tutorials, talking about products a little bit more as I move forward. I'll learn a little bit more about that after my, after my meeting with them. So I'm excited about becoming a brand, an, brand ambassador for Jerry's Artorama. Right now I am using this paper that I did purchase through Jerry's and it is that Artistico um, Fabriano paper. It's fabulous. The only thing that I have a problem about it, it comes in a, um, oh, what do you want to say? It comes in a block. But that block, that for whatever reason, because I work with so much water, it, it tends to, uh, the sides open up. But I'm finding that most of the time, I don't even need it to be on a block. As right now, it's not on a block. The paper lays flat. This Fabriano paper is actually fabulous for wet media. And let's see, what do I have happening here? Bleed proof white. Okay. If you're new to my channel, you may be wondering what is she going to do with the bleed proof white? Well, if you watched a lot of my videos, you'll see that I use this in almost every painting. I absolutely adore what it does to a painting, but you gotta be really careful using this stuff because it can make your painting go south real fast. Um, it gets real muddy if you touch it. Once that pigment's on the paper, you can't mess around with the pigments too much. Okay, when they're wet and they're mingling, don't touch them. And if you do touch them, like I am right now, ever so gently, I'm mopping stuff up because it's a little bit wet. But what happens with this is it, 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 it just gives, I don't know, it just puts these beautiful like spots on the painting and it just makes it look really loose and there's this pretty texture and it's just really pretty. It almost like a salt effect without it being salt. And some of you are gonna say, well, isn't that an ink? No. No. Bleed Proof White is not an ink. You can go to Dr. P.H. Martin's website and go look it up, and you will find out that it is actually an opaque watercolor. It's very thick. It covers all kinds of mistakes, um, but it's not good for mixing. You don't want to use, you don't want to mix your paints with this um, opaque because it gets muddy. So that's what I'm saying. If you use it, you have to know how to use it right. And um, I don't know of a lot of artists that use it the way that I do, um, but I find it to be really cool. It makes my paintings a little bit stand out from the others being a little bit different. I don't know how I ended up start using this stuff, but um, once I did, I was hooked. It started with my paintings, with my flowers, and now it's in my landscapes, and uh, who knows where it'll go next. And let's see, what am I working with now? Okay, so I have um, some Liquitex acrylic gouache and primary yellow happening here. I'm going to make the sunflowers with this just, I'm kind of sprinkling it on a little bit right there. And now I'm gonna actually paint on some little spots, not making them look like sunflowers, but more like little blobs of yellow, keeping it loose, just like the rest of the painting. 
I wouldn't want them to look like they have little petals on it. You know what I mean? I want to keep it really loose, the entire painting. And you might be wondering what I used before. Um, I think I failed to mention it. I missed it as I was talking. When I was using the bottle and I put my paper down, paper towel down, and I was spraying a product, that stuff is by Ranger, and it's called Distress Spray Stain in Color Forced Moss. And it, it's nice for the foreground. It gives a nice texture. I like um, what it does. So yeah, I'm putting in my little um, sunflowers now, my little loose sunflowers. And once I get those down, then I'm gonna go in with some Van Dyke Brown and I'll put in some little centers. And I'm just sprinkling in a little bit of that yellow. And that yellow was really fun. On the right-hand side of my painting, when I was playing around with the yellow, it just, it's so, it's so bossy. That yellow paint is very bossy. It just pushed the other paints out of the way. <laughs> and it was, it's actually fun to watch the yellow in play push the other colors around. Okay, looks like I'm grabbing some more Van Dyke Brown. And I'm making, I guess I'm giving the flowers um, a stem. Or the centers, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting the little centers on. And now I'm just scoring the paper and running the palette knife down from the flowers, making stems, and also now putting in some grass. It's scoring the paper, separating the pigment so that you can see the white paper underneath it. It's a nice technique for grass. It's also a good technique for trees. And what also, what I like about it right now, I'm putting all these textures into that, um, into that tree and a kind of opening up the painting. And when I say opening up the painting, I mean um, kind of, it, it, it brings that white kind of back into the painting so the painting can kind of breathe. It just, 
I think of it as almost oxygen uh, that the painting needs. Um, if it's just solid paint and there's no white, it just it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. So you want to re either retain the white or put the white back in. And I'm putting the white back in right now by, by scoring that paper. And I also put the white back in by retaining some of it and also by putting the bleed proof white in. But my paintings tend, have a tendency to be highly pigmented. Um, I really like to push the envelope with uh, color. I'm not one to be weak with my color. Um, I use a, a lot. Some, some, I see some artists that make small washes of paint and it's very thin like tea. Mine's more... I can sometimes use a consistency that can be kind of like cream almost. Not cream, maybe more like a half and half. Um, it's a lot thicker. Now I'm going into the Bleed Proof White and I'm just going to add in some little flecks of white. I just want it to look like there's some uh, flowers kind of dancing around in uh, the foreground there. So I'm just dropping that in right now. Keeping my eye out for anything that might be splattering up in the clouds. So I'm kind of re-wetting that whole area again because if I don't, it's going to have another hard line. And that area was kind of bugging me right there. I just felt that cloud that was there was kind of oddly shaped. And I'm going to go in now and I'm trying to pick up a little bit of that pigment to make it a little bit more white there. And it really, it doesn't want to budge. So what I end up doing here, I'll go ahead and put in some more clouds here, just lightening things up a little bit because the paper's wet and I can still pick up the pigment. But what I'm going to do there um, is I'm going to end up putting some Dr's PH Martin Bleed Proof White there. And I'm not just going to just let it sit right there. I'm going to kind of blend it into the trees a little bit so I don't have a hard line. See, like right there, if I would stop right there, that paint would kind of have a hard line to it, and I don't want that. I want my painting to have a very um, blurred effect. So kind of blend it into the trees. And now that cloud, to me, feels much better. It just needed that little extra something. And see how nice that using that bleed proof white when you've got a little, you need to make a little correction. That was pretty easy to do. And because it's a watercolor and it's not an ink, if you were to, let's say, put your watercolor painting into some kind of um, competition and it was for watercolor only um, that would still fall under watercolor because it is not an ink. Some may say, is it kind of like a gouache? 
Uh, yes, but gouache is still a lot thinner. Um, I feel like this one's probably about the heaviest you can get for a white other than putting an acrylic down. Okay, so now I'm using um, Ranger Distress Spray Stain and I sprayed that down again. I'm putting a little texture there in the foreground. And that, again, did I tell you, I, that is in the color Forest Moss. It's kind of a green kind of slash brown color. So that's it for my tutorial, guys. I'm so glad that you have joined me. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and God bless.